Hi, good morning, everybody. Wonderful Saturday morning. Welcome back. Yes, I'm smiling. And I've got a special hat on this morning. Hopefully you can see that. My good friend Jimmy Rode down at JB Aircraft Engines really surprised me. Guess what we have on our RV-10. So this showed up yesterday morning, and it took me about 20 minutes using my trusty A-frame, got it all hung. And uh, for those of you who are maybe new to our, our YouTube here, let me just explain what this is all about. So when I bought this kit, this RV-10 kit from a gentleman down in Florida, it actually had a brand new stock Vans Lycoming engine. So it had been in his uh, conditioned hangar for about a year, and then we moved it up here, that was down in Florida, to Atlanta here, and it's been stored in our basement, which is humidity controlled, for another year. Uh, so it was about 24 months in a box, sealed, preserved from Lycoming. Uh, many of you know I had a Thunderbolt on our last RV-10, which I really loved. It was very smooth, I think 15, 1,600 hours of absolute reliability, five trips to Alaska. So we all know about being in the food chain in Alaska, and I'm all about reliability. So for years, we've watched Jimmy Broad and his team take care of our customers. We've sent engines down there. They've taken stuff down there. His workmanship has just been stellar. So I decided, you know what? My chance to be a customer of Jimmy's. So we loaded up the engine in our truck. We went down to Sebring last fall and talked to Jimmy about what we might do to the engine. It obviously didn't need a complete overhaul, but it has sat for two years, and I wanted to know how it looked. Quite candidly, for those of you who are maybe in the same situation with your engine, you know, in a box from Lycoming and your project's taking longer than we all think it will, Jimmy was surprised too. Absolutely no rust inside the cylinder. So it really could have been taken out of the box, installed on the airplane, and ran. But again, wanted Jimmy to do some magic that I know he does for some of our customers, and I wanted I wanted to know for sure, and were there any reliability improvements that we could do to this engine? So the engine showed up, really nice logbook sticker with a whole length, a lot of things that Jimmy did to it. And I tell you what we're gonna try and do here. Rather than me trying to explain everything he did, which by the way, I'm really excited about. Some things are just really pretty, uh, but there's a lot of reliability enhancements. We're gonna try and get Jimmy on the phone and put him on this video audio-wise anyway, and explain everything he did. So bear with us for a bit. All right, we managed to use some technology. We've got Jimmy on the line. Good morning, Jimmy. How are you doing? Hey, good morning, Vic. I'm glad to see somebody else is working on Saturday morning. <laughs> yeah, you bet. Listen, introduce you to everybody. Really appreciate you joining us. And uh, Carol mentioned last night that you could do a better job explaining everything you did than I could. So we're going to turn it over to you and let you explain all the magic you worked on this engine for us. Sure. Um, actually, it wasn't a very difficult job. Uh, the engine uh, was in better shape than I expected it to be in. Um, the first thing we did was we brought the engine into the shop and stood it up and uh, just made sure everything was clean and everything was there. Um, made sure everything was present that was supposed to be there. Um, and it was. Um, we, uh, we first thing we did was we removed the cylinders and inspected them for any kind of issues with corrosion. And we also wanted to inspect uh, the wear patterns during the initial run at Lycoming and everything looked normal. Um, sometimes depending on the uh, condition of the uh, storage, we'll get some surface rust in those cylinders and a new engine that's been sitting for a couple of years. In this case, yours was not. So we, that was a good thing. Um, however, since we had all that exposed, um, the pistons weren't quite matching in weights. So we went ahead and we bought a set of, uh, standard compression pistons, uh, per your request. Um, and they all weighed exactly the same, 1168 grams. Um, and we installed those, uh, those pistons back into those cylinders. Um, then we, during that time, we also polished the intake and the exhaust ports. We didn't take much material out. We just wanted to smooth any of the casting marks out, anything at all that we could try to do to maybe improve the airflow just a little bit. Um, Lycoming in the past has had some issues here in the recent past with uh, 
connecting rod bushings. And it's been my experience in the last 35 years that sometimes these ADs will expand. Um, the date ranges will expand um, and they'll, they'll have supplements to these ADs. Even though these rods weren't applicable, we went ahead and pulled the rods off. But we kind of had a, uh, we had another idea there. Um, Superior sells a connecting rod that has a tongue and groove fit. So the rod and the rod cap is a more of a high performance rod. And then we installed those new tongue and groove rods that were all match weight and balancing with uh, 75060 stretch bolts, high, high, high uh, performance stretch bolts. Um, they are originally installed with the 75061 from the factory. Um, something that we feel that's a little better set up than, uh, than what was in the engine. Um, we included new rod bushings also at that time. Um, so uh, some of the other little things that we did when we reinstalled those cylinders, we pulled out the hydraulic units and checked the leak down rate on them, and they were all pretty sufficient. Um, the... Uh, Cylinder hold down hardware we replaced when we installed the cylinders. Um, of course, we used new silicone valve cover gaskets when we put those on, and we tried to dress you up a little bit with some with some chrome valve cover kits. There, I hope you like that. Those look really nice. Thank you. We have sourced some uh, stainless steel intake pipes, um, so we installed new stainless steel intake pipes along with. Uh, the 73346 superior intake flanges. So the intake flanges that attach to the cylinder is a constant issue. What happens is the pipe wears into that flange and then it becomes loose at the cylinder where the intake gasket attaches to the cylinder. The billeted flanges seem to be way less susceptible to that wear and they're holding up a little bit better. Oh, that's great. Um, so some of the other things we did, we, we installed the oil filter adapter for you and your backup generator. Um, we had to change some studs around to do that. Um, the engine didn't come with oil cooler fittings, but we knew what you needed and where they needed to be placed. So we put those in for you. Um, one of the pet peeves I have on a Lycoming engine is they paint the engine um, with some pretty crappy paint. And the uh, push tubes uh, never seem to hold the paint. So what we did is we pulled those out and we installed new push tubes, but we used a high temperature clear coat on them so that there's no paint to come off and it keeps the keeps them looking a little better. Um, after that, we put it all together. We pressure tested it with oil, made sure that everything was good. And then we uh, boxed it up for you. You have any questions for me? I don't think so, Jimmy. Just want to say thanks. I can't wait to get it going. I know we're aiming for sun and fun. We'll see. Carol's being very generous, allowing me to work out here. Long days, so we're making progress and really, really appreciate you and moving up your schedule. We know how busy you are, but uh, thanks. Absolutely. We really appreciate the chance to earn your business and earn your trust. Thanks a lot. Uh, you've you done take care. Thanks, Jimmy. Some of what you're going to see in the video was recorded yesterday, trying to get mine and Jimmy's schedule combined. We were able to do what you just saw this morning. But yesterday, before I hung it, we're going to show you some video of the backside of the engine and talk about some things that need to be done that just make it a whole lot easier to do before you install it, such as oil pressure fittings, which Jimmy already installed on this engine, as you mentioned. But there's some other things to do back there, and you're going to see in the video. You might want to remember to do all of it. I forgot to put the oil pump shroud on, so now I've got the fuel pump off, not the oil pump shroud, the fuel pump shroud. Got the fuel pump off, trying to do this. I may just remove this engine to put this. This is a pain in the neck right now. It only took me 20 minutes to mount this, so we'll see what happens, but I'm going to give it a shot. Anyway, enjoy. Airwolf remote oil filter. I always do one of those. It makes it so much easier to change the oil. One of the things I want to talk about here, and we'll come back to this, is you got to make certain you clean this allodyne coating here, uh, the an anodizing coating rather, before you put this in there or the oil temp probe won't read correctly, and we'll talk about that in a bit. You can see I've got dual mags on here. One is a retarded mag. We have no impulse couples. I am going to replace one of these with a Surefly, uh, trying to decide on timing yet, whether we run it like this first and put a Surefly on it, but it will, in fact, have a Surefly on it eventually. Uh, if you notice, we've also got the Monk Works generator here. Look how much 
smaller that is, and it's 30 amps output, uh, and it works really nicely at idle, even unlike some of the standby alternators. So that saves a lot of weight here. Pretty cool. And uh, I'm trying to think what else Jimmy did. He'll probably remind me. Anyway, really, really excited about this, and uh, we should be able to get this hung today. So you're probably wondering what else we've gotten finished on the RB10 since the last update. So let me walk you through something because we've been out here working pretty hard. Uh, the firewall, I think I shared this with you already once before, but it's pretty far along. The engine is now ready to hang. Uh, the nose gear, nose wheel, everything is on there. Actually, the carbon fiber wheel pants on the main gear have been fitted and mounted from uh, Sky Designs there in Aero South. Uh, they're not finished, but they are drilled and mounted, and boy, that saves a lot of work, and they're really nice and light. And I think I mentioned we have put on the 600 by 6 wheels on this aircraft, so uh, we got those on. The other thing, the inside now is pretty much completely done, and it's just about ready for paint. One of the last things that was holding me up was we worked to make this uh, McMaster car uh, seal around the doors. Carol was tired of all the leakage we had in the last RV-10. She says, I don't want any cool air this time. So we worked on getting this. Uh, it's a little bit of work in that uh, you're, you're going to mix up some uh, epoxy, put it inside that McMaster car seal, and then put it in place with the door shut. So I did all this from inside. That way we know we got a nice seal. And then it rips right off. So then we're going to, uh, you know, i got a lot of sanding here, dude, to get rid of all this excess. And then that seal has a really nice fit on here. And I was real pleased with the way it came out on the inside. So we've got that done, a bunch of sanding to do. And unfortunately, as I mentioned, it got cold in Georgia. So it's going to be a while before I can get this outside and get this sand. And once I get this sand, it will be ready to paint the inside, uh, which is going to be a silver metallic uh, paint, Imran paint. And it should match the interior that Carol's doing very, very nicely. I uh, can't think of anything else on the inside. I think we shared with you the instrument panel last time. Maybe one other thing I can show you what I did with the heaters here this time is we are, in fact, using the TCW uh, servos here with knobs on the uh, instrument panel to control the heat rather than the cables. kind of got tired of those cables. They're really hard to get in there and adjust. I always turn up my hands. These I've got installed now and uh, should work very nicely. So. We've got that done as well. And uh, let's go back to this. I want to show you what you need to do here. So your oil temp probe, this is what it looks like. This is a resistance probe, meaning it measures from this point to this point a resistance, and that's how it displays your oil temperature. So what's important is this is what's called a single probe, a single wire probe rather you can see the only one wire connection here so it is supposed to read to ground all right so I'm going to put this up so you can see this on the meter I'll take this probe back out and show you what I mean so if I connect one lead to the probe itself and one to the where you connect your signal wire we're going to get a resistance up there that looks like about 875 ohms or so okay and I can probably show you here if I hold this with my finger and breathe on it maybe. Watch the resistance there. It will go down. As it warms up, you get less resistance. So you're measuring resistance as your oil temp goes up. So if you put this in just like this without preparing the surface that it mates to, show you what happens here. We're measuring to the aircraft from this. Look at the meter. It's open. No resistance there, no matter where I go to a ground on the aircraft. Okay. So what we're going to do to make certain this reads properly is take a Dremel with a wire brush on it right here. And I'm not going to do this now because I don't have any eye protection on, but I'm going to use this Dremel wheel to clean this off till it's nice, shiny aluminum. And then we'll have real good resistance. So it's really important, as you guys know, and girls, to uh, have good oil temp. 
So, you know, you can, with a high resistance there, your oil temp one will read low all the time, and you'll think you got a nice cooling engine. And you could have oil temp, high oil temp, and not know it if you don't pay attention to your probe and how you connect it. So, got that done. Uh, we'll get it done. And uh, I can't, the am wings. I missing anything? Oh, the Carol wings. wants me to tell you about the wings. We actually had the wings on and off. You can see we had to do these wing root fairings. And uh, Carol and I managed to get those done by ourselves. So there are some pictures we'll show you. The trusty A-frame here holding up this engine. I've probably mentioned this before, but this, uh, this A-frame comes in really handy. And we were able to use this A-frame just to support the outboard side of the wing and then put the inboard side on a couple of sawhorses so it didn't get away from us. And then Carol just managed the A-frame to lift up the outboard edge of the wing. They slid right into place here into the wing root. These things actually come out. If you, these, for those of you who are building, are in there to keep the spacing. Those come out. The wing slid right into place. We got the bolts in. I bet it didn't take us, what, 10 minutes per wing? It was so fast, I couldn't believe it. You had everything staged perfectly. I mean, we've had years when we were... Rock, 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 push, and it yeah. took forever with a bunch of people, and this was just you and me. Yeah, it worked out really, really well. So those are back off and in the stand, and uh, as I said, we're going to move ahead with some engine and cowling work and wait for some warm weather, and then we'll be ready to paint. So in closing, a couple things I kind of want to remind everybody of is Home Builders Week is coming up next week. And I'm doing three presentations, Monday, Thursday, and then the close out with Charlie on Friday. Uh, this year, I think I'm doing um, how to get your home build across the finish line. So we'll talk about that. Uh, another presentation on buying a home build. And then the last one will be on common builder mistakes. I'll even share some of my mistakes with you. Yes, I make them too. Sometimes Carol catches them. And sometimes somebody coming through the hangar catches them. And I'm perfectly okay with that. And I will share them with you next Friday night. So I look forward to seeing all of you. And by the way, I know during Home Builders Week, the AA actually runs some specials on some of their books. We're really excited to tell you that the book that we wrote, Vans uh, Maintenance Guide for Vans RV Aircraft, EAA is now carrying that. So it's in their bookstore as well. So that, that was a nice way to start the new year. Anyway, thanks for watching. And I uh, can't think of anything else this time around. So... Uh, Next time you hear from us, should be pretty far along with the engine. Take care and Happy New Year.